Okay, we are going to go over the procedure of how to isolate DNA from an MTL using the Promega uh, Wizard System DNA Cleanup Kit. And so what you're going to need is a 3 mil syringe, just one. You're going to need a 15 mil centrifuge tube. You're going to need a second syringe barrel from the wizard kit. You're going to need two filters, excuse me, I guess, two columns, okay, um, and you're going to need your MTL. So your MTL should be uh, kept at four degrees except for whenever you need it, so you'll need to get that from the refrigerator. And so you'll take that back to your bench, and then what you're going to do is transfer one mil uh, of your MTL into your 15 mil tube, and then uh, we'll pick up from there. Okay, so we have our, D our MTL, here it is right here. Uh, nicely labeled. This is the way your MTL, let's see, hopefully this is, uh, it's not in focus, but this is the way your MTL should look. I've got the name of the phage on here, the date that this MTL was made, name, date, and the titer. And so I'm going to take this, I've taken out a mill, transferred it to here, and I'm going to put this back at four degrees. Now this is what we're going to use. We're going to take this to the hood. I'm going to take we're going to need two microcentrifuge tubes. We've got some columns, and I'll show you how to set those up in just a moment. But we're going to take this to the hood because this is where the next step is going to happen, where the uh, DNA is going to be used. Okay, this is the hood. This is where you use DNA and RNA. Note the signs. So the addition of DNA and RNA happens in the hood right up until the point where you kill the DNA and RNA. At that point, you can stop working in the hood. So we're going to take our sample, we're going to bring it in here, and then we're going to add our DNA to the sample. And so here's DNA, it's kept on ice. We're going to take uh, some DNA and add it to the sample, and I need to put this back on the tripod. So we're going to pause this. All right, so now we got this set up. So this is not a particularly complicated procedure at this point. The key here is that we are going to only use things that are in the hood for this part because DNA is nasty stuff and we want to keep it in the hood. So what we need to do is we need to add four microliters of DNA to our sample. So we have our sample. The DNA is kept on ice. We use the pipettes that are marked with red for danger and the tips that are already in the hood. We are going to add four microliters. Here's a little, little tip for how to open things when you don't want to touch them. You just snap it right there on the side. Four microliters. Invert gently to mix. And then it's going to sit there for 30 minutes. We're not going to film the whole 30 minutes. But let it sit. We'll pause while it's incubating. All right. It's been 30 minutes. I know it doesn't seem like it with the magic of... Um, video and pausing, but it's been 30 minutes. Hopefully all of the DNA has been killed. It's okay to leave this over 30 minutes. If you're going to leave it a really long time, you got to put it at 4 degrees. Probably don't want your phage dying, right? Um, but a little over 30 minutes is better than a little under 30 minutes. The DNA is in, excuse me, the, uh, the next step, you're going to add resin, right? The resin is in a water bath in both hoods. Now you should have 
taken off your gloves and changed gloves, of course, so we have new gloves so that we haven't been spreading DNAs all over the place. Uh, in both hoods, we have a water bath with resin. That's so that we can keep it uh, uh, warm, okay, 37 degrees. The resin contains guanidine thiocyanate. That destroys proteins. It's going to kill the DNAs. It's also going to break open the phage heads so that we can get at the DNA. You need to add, what, two mils of your uh, guanidine thiocyanate containing DNA cleanup resin to your sample. You can do that either with a P1000 twice. We have a, a hood only P1000 with large tips or you can use one of our regular pipettes, a five mil. Either way, what you need to do first is you need to take the resin and you gotta mix it. You'll notice, I hope you can see it, that it settles. See the pellet? Yeah, it settles. So you have to mix it nicely before you use it because we want it really nicely mixed. So we're gonna do that. And you got to do it constantly. And mix that up right up until you use it. You can go up and down with a pipette a little bit too. That'll do the same thing. So on a five mil, if you go up to the three, that's two mils. And we can add it to our sample. All the waste from these first two steps stays in here because it could potentially be contaminated. Uh, and then we'll have an autoclave bag right next to both hoods that you can dump things in when this gets full. Only use red striped stuff. Now your sample now, put the DNA, please put the DNA cleanup back at 37 degrees for everyone else. Now your sample, which you should mix by, again, it says by inversion, gentle inversion. Just like that sample, uh, the resin settled in yours, it will settle uh, settle in the sample, uh, excuse me, in the tube, it will settle in yours. So you need to keep mixing it right before you're gonna use it as well. However, you don't need to work in the hood anymore because you are killing all of the DNA. So now you can move away from the hood. You can take your sample away. So we're gonna do that now, I'm going to take this and this, and we're going to come over here. So we have all right. So while we were waiting. I grabbed a few things. So this is the way you set up a column. You take your column, it just sits in a centrifuge tube. You don't have to jam it in. Remember, when you centrifuge, it's gonna be pulled down, so it isn't gonna fall out. One of these uh, uh, syringe barrels just screws right onto it, okay? So one of them, comes from the kit. The other one, of course, we had to get separately. Now it already has a plunger in it, so we're gonna take that plunger out. And attach it. Now once you attach a, a, a barrel, never pull back on a um, plunger. Just like it destroys a filter, it will destroy a column. So you always have to detach the column before pulling back on a plunger. So we've got our sample. It's settling. Even as we look at it, you got to keep mixing it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these three mils and we're going to separate them evenly on these two columns. Now we don't need to worry about the DNA anymore. It's dead. So we're going to grab a P1000. And we're going to keep mixing this. And since it's three mils, we'll put one and a half into
each of them. So I'm going to go up and down a little bit just to keep mixing it. So we'll put one into one. One into another. Be very careful if there are two of you, you might want to have one of you holding this. And now we need to put a half into each, right? This is one of the things that it's kind of convenient to have two people doing so you don't knock this over. I've already seen some people knock this over and lose their sample. You don't want to lose your sample. It won't necessarily work out to exactly one and a half, so we got some extra here. Just divide it equally between the two. Okay, so this is done. Now what you're going to do, oops, now what you're going to do is uh, push it through the column. And so you're actually building the column now. Those little columns, they were really just little plastic tubes with a piece of glass wool. That resin that we're, that we just added to that, to these syringe barrels, that is the column. And so we're going to make it right now. Trying to push it through into these tiny little um, microcentrifuge tubes is kind of tricky. I actually like to use this original tube, this 15 mil tube. You have a lot more space in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just push down. Sometimes it's very tricky, it's very difficult to do this. It may take a lot of pressure. In fact, the more pressure it takes, the more DNA you have. And that's a good thing. Never let it go back. Don't pull the plunger back until you're done. Disconnect the column and then you can pull the plunger out and then reconnect the column and then do the other one. Nice thing about the 15 mil tube is you have a lot more space. Disconnect the column then you can pull the plunger back and reconnect the column. Now, the DNA is in the columns. Everything that's gone through is waste. Everything that's gonna go through is waste until we put water through the column. But the next step is we wanna wash it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some isopropanol and run that through some columns. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go dump this and trade it for some isopropanol. Alrighty, so I dumped the column, just dumped it down the sink or into an autoclave bag. You can do either one, the column wash, waste. And I went and got some isopropanol, 80% isopropanol. These are not disposable. We keep refilling them. Please return them to the front of the room. And what we're going to do is we are going to add two mils isopropanol to each column. So make sure we set our... Like that's correctly. One, two, one, two. And then you do what you did before. Take the column, put it over top of the 15 mil tube and push it through. And now what's happening is everything that's, what didn't come off immediately, but that dissolves in the isopropanol, gets washed off. Once it's all the way through, remember, disconnect the column before you pull out the plunger. Do the same to the other one. So that is two mils of isopropanol through the column. Remember, do not pull it backwards. It could be very difficult to do this. Don't let up the pressure. And 
and then there's your isopropanol wash. Now you're going to do that two more times, so there's a total of six mils of isopropanol being washed through each column. I'm not going to bother showing you that. I'll pause and do that. Okay, so it's been each column has been washed three times with isopropanol. Everything that went through there is waste. Okay, we now have two clean columns. Hopefully the only thing on here uh, is DNA. But we got to get rid of all the isopropanol or else it will not be uh, useful DNA for uh, restriction digestion or for sequencing because the isopropanol will stop those enzymes from doing their job. So we need to dry them out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these columns and we're going to put them on two brand new fresh microcentrifuge tubes that have not been used before in this process and then we are going to centrifuge these. You don't have to jam these down. The book tells you to snap off the lids. You don't have to do that either because we have lids in our centrifuges. So centrifuge, the way you use these. Right here Pull up, make sure it's all the way in with the lid that can't close pushed to the inside. This one exactly opposite of the other tube, that's so that it's balanced. Again, the lid's pushed to the inside, and then this little inner lid is closed, right? You got to make sure that that snap closed. Now those little lids won't go flying off or break off. Closed. Five minutes at maximum speed, right? So five minutes, this is how you set the time. Maximum speed to start it right here. And it's going. It'll stop itself automatically, but I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch it for five minutes. All right, centrifuge is spinning down. And what do we have? We have columns where a little bit more isopropanol has come through them because they weren't all the way dry, right? So they get a little more dry by running them through the centrifuge. You get a little more isopropanol out of them. Oh, this one, these columns are pretty crappy. This one actually broke if that happens to you, it's not the end of the world. Your DNA is okay, it's just a little lip. It'll survive. It's gonna make it difficult because it's gonna get stuck into the um, tubes, but it's not the end of the world. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take these and you're going to take them to a heat block and you're gonna set them right in the heat block for uh, just a minute and you're going to dry them. I'll show you that now. This is our 80 degree heat block. The two things here that you're going to use. First, you're going to dry the DNA and then you're going to elute your columns, I should say. And then you're going to elute your sample from your columns with the water that we store here. So first, you're going to put your columns here. You're going to leave them there for 30 seconds to a minute. A minute is fine. You're just going to leave them there. You're going to need some tubes when you're done. You should label them. Uh, the name of your phage, the date that you're making this DNA, and then later on the concentration. There's two of them, column A, column B. Afterwards, you're going to combine them. You're going to need another two for your second two washes. So let's just pretend it's been a minute. You should wait the whole minute. When you're done, you're going to take them, put them right here, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to take water that is at 80 degrees and you're going to add it right to the column. You don't want that water to cool off. So you're going to open one of these tubes and put it back right in there because you want it to stay warm. And you're going to pipette 50 microliters out and then you add it right to the top of the column. And then do it Oops. to the other one. Okay. Once you do that, you can let them sit for a minute or so if you want. There's nothing wrong with doing that. 
and then you centrifuge it. And so this time, everything up until now that goes through the columns has been garbage, right? It's been stuff we don't care about. But now that we put water on the column, DNA elutes in water, it dissolves, and so now this isn't a column wash, it's a column elution. Now we're going to keep it. And so this time when you put it in the centrifuge, we're going to care about the stuff that comes out. So you're going to spin it for one minute at maximum speed. What comes out is your sample. As long as something like 50 microliters comes out, everything is to the good. You take these two samples, combine them in one tube. You have to use a pipette for that. You pipette one into the other. You can't pour 50 microliters. And then you take these two columns, put them on two fresh tubes, and do it again. Do another elution with the hot water. Elution one, elution two. Don't combine the two elutions. So these two are elution one, and then you'll have two tubes, which you'll combine, and that'll be elution two. And then we take them to the nanodrop and look and see how they look. We may or may not combine them after that. That's all there is to it.